Hey everyone, it's Michael and welcome back to Box Mining. Today I really want to explore the idea of China's national digital currency, also known as DCEP, in a lot of detail. So recently this was announced and it caused a lot of stir in the social media space because all of a sudden China's embracing blockchain, they're deploying a digital currency and that currency is one-to-one -one backed by the renminbi. It's going to change a lot that's happening in the cryptocurrency space as we know it. So what we're going to talk about in this episode is what are the opportunities? Now that there is a new currency, a new national currency developed by China, what are the opportunities for the cryptocurrency ecosystem? Will this bring more users into crypto and bring bigger adoption? And will it challenge Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies so we know today? So that's what we're going to look in very close detail. We're going to take a look at what this is, what's been announced so far, the features, and of course, how the social media in China is responding as well. And as always, everything covered in this video is my personal opinion, not financial advice. If you like content that updates you about what's really happening in the cryptocurrency space, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. So let's start off with what is DCEP. In very much ways, it's Fiat 2.0. It's a digital version of the renminbi. And it will be pegged one to one. So this note, 100 renminbi here, will be worth exactly 100 DCEP and vice versa. And this will never change. This is going to be guaranteed by the central government that it's always going to be priced this way. Second of all, it's also issued by the same guys who print this. So <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why they can peg it. It's because they always print the same thing. It does actually have some elements of cryptography and blockchain inside. But how it functions is a very different method to that of Bitcoin. It's completely centralized. That means the central government will always have access to printing currency, to governing currency, to freezing accounts. These will all definitely be guaranteed in the system. And in fact, the reason why it's not launched right now immediately is because it needs to comply with government anti-money laundering controls, which means, of course, freezing accounts, etc. Initially, what it's designed to do is that it's meant to replace reserve money system. So right now, for communication between the banks, moving money around, it relies on very old dated antiquated systems. And one of the examples pointed out in Huang Qiufan's speech was really about the SWIFT system. It's old, it's outdated, it needs something fast, modern, and secure to replace it. And that's one of the primary initial functions of DCEP. And that's how it's going to be rolled out too. So the central bank is going to roll out DCEP to its working banks, its conglomerate banks, merchant banks. They're going to roll these to these big banks very much the same way that fiat money, physical money, is rolled out right now. Eventually, where it's going to go is that once it's been done deploying inside banks, it's going to go to consumers. And this is where a lot of the social media is taking place. Right now, the objective of what the Chinese central government is trying to do is it's trying to get the people used to the idea that they're going to deploy a new currency and that people are going to use it. So eventually, it's going to hit the big, big internet giants in China, like Tencent and Alibaba, and to be used on their platforms. So Alipay, WeChat Pay, the two of the biggest e-commerce payment systems in China. And this is actually quite interesting because we recently found out that there's going to be a mandate that anywhere that accepts digital payments, like your WeChat Pay, Alipay, even Apple Pay, anywhere that accepts digital payments must accept DCEP. So this is going to be very big for adoption. It's like, essentially, it's the government saying, you must do this or else we're going to remove your business license. You can no longer do business in China if you accept other currency payments, but not DCEP. DCEP is going to be widespread throughout China and everyone's going to use it. That's a government guarantee for you. Scary a little bit, right? How much power the Chinese government has. But this is being done and this is being discussed. And one of the kind of interesting ideas here is that they're also pushing what we see in social media is that the government's pushing the idea that DCEP is safer than WeChat Pay and Alipay. The reason why is because it is backed by the central government of China, so Zhongyang Huobi, rather than say, for example, money on WeChat Pay or Alipay, which is kind of money held by merchant banks. 
And what they're saying here and say, saying about these merchant banks is that, you know, bar everything, they might collapse. And if they do, you have to eat the insurance for it. There's no guarantee from the central government, but DCEP has a central government guarantee. And this is what they're telling people, and they're really pushing this so eventually that big rollout throughout China, that's going to be huge. Second thing that's really interesting about DCEP that I found was that it's also going to be offline to offline transactions. What it's trying to promise to do is that even in the case where there is no internet, so both parties are not connected to the internet, you can still exchange DCEP as if it's like physical cash. So it's, it, it really takes that function off physical cash. You don't really need to have a bank account associated. So it's going to be currency for the unbanked in China. And it's also going to be offline to offline. So anyone can just use it as if it's normal cash. It's kind of crazy. So now that DCEP is announced, what are the opportunities for the cryptocurrency ecosystem? Can this push blockchain forward or set it back? First of all, I want to say that it actually establishes a lot of legitimacy in blockchain and in also blockchain security. So if you think about it this way, recently there's always been these news being spread like Google's new quantum computer can threaten Bitcoin. Oh my God, you need a quantum resistant ledger, etc., etc. So let's just say this, if China's $25 trillion economy is eventually going to be based on DCEP and DCEP is going to run that, then DCEP is going to be super secure, blockchain is going to be secure, and you know by natural association that the encryptions that we have on Bitcoin, that it's secure. And that's going to alleviate a lot of public concern, especially in the face of quantum threats, etc. People should now know that it's not going to come anytime in the next half a century. And I think this is in very much in parallel to when JP Morgan launched their coin. Bitcoin prices also went up because JP Morgan is also adopting similar technology. So the leaders of this, the forefront of this technology is actually Bitcoin. And they're going to have to spend a lot of time. So both JP Morgan and China, they're going to have to spend a lot of time to tell people, oh, guess what? Yeah, blockchain, it's not just about Bitcoin. It's also about us. And they're taking the second foot approach. They're, they're second to the race as opposed to first, which is Bitcoin. The second really big opportunity that I see here is that this will teach a lot of people that digital currency as a whole and the cryptographic elements that protect it, this is secure and they should need to know how to use it. So right now, I think this is the biggest problem to crypto adoption, which is the fact that, yes, it's convenient for people to download a wallet, but for people to secure it up and trust the security of said wallet and their own backup security procedure, that's really hard. Decept is going to change the game a lot because Decept, because there's offline to offline transactions, now people are going to have to get used to the idea that cryptography rather than accounts are going to protect their secu account security and financial security. And this is a big change because people are right now, they're still used to PayPal or WeChat Pay or Alipay where their money is kind of um, governed by someone else, which customer service agents can help you recover money, etc. But with DCEP becoming, becoming a real digital currency, that's going to change the mentality of people. And it's going to gear people towards what we have been doing in the crypto space for a long time. Something that's also interesting and came with the DCEP package is a reversal in government policy towards cryptocurrency mining. So previously in 2017, the government declared cryptocurrency mining as an industry that China wants to phase out. They don't want miners anymore. They don't want... Bitcoin miners to get out of the country and also for them to stop trading cryptocurrencies. Now this has been completely reversed. The newest edition of China's Industrial Structure Adjustment Guidance Catalog no longer specifies mining as something that is forbidden or banned or phased out. This policy reversal is really important because now, first of all, miners can do it above ground. But secondly, the government also acknowledges that cryptocurrency mining is extremely important to public blockchains. So we know that something like DCEP by itself, it's private, so it doesn't require mining. So this policy reversal can be seen as the first step of China reopening up to other cryptocurrencies as well, beyond just DCEP and into the whole mining ecosystem. And one additional cryptocurrency speculation in China that's brewing up right now is what other policy reversals might take place. Will China reverse the ban on cryptocurrency trading? 
that will be very interesting to follow. Okay, then. So, what are the challenges as well? Because now that this is coming into place, are there any threats to the cryptocurrency ecosystem? And I say for sure there are, because right now what China's doing is they're pushing blockchain first, but they're trying to heavily suppress Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. They're trying to get economists, they're trying to get key influencers and decision makers in China to express the fact that you can't trust Bitcoin, you can't trust cryptocurrencies. And this is going to only build up over time. So that battle is going to fight. And in many senses, that battle is between centralized currency versus decentralized currency. And getting that message across that a decentralized currency means that the government can't massively cause inflation, politicians can't control what happens, and also government control as well. The key message here is that in China, what's scary about DCEP is that the government has complete control over it, meaning it can lock, suspend accounts. And cause essentially a surveillance state in terms of the currency, and that's freaking scary. All of these disadvantages they need to be expressed, but China is actively suppressing that. So that's one of the threats.、They're, the threats coming here is that the Chinese government will say that their version is the best, centralized control is the best, and we, as representatives in this space of representatives of decentralization, we gotta answer that call and. Reply to all the inaccuracies that will be said about Bitcoin. If you guys want to investigate this a little bit further, there's an article, full article about DCEP on my website, boxmining.com. Recently, I've been spending a lot of time just making sure that the information here is both up to date and accurate with Chinese sources. So you can always reference this, and it will always be updated throughout the weeks and months as new information is released. And guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys have any other questions about what's happening with DCEP and China's new initiative into blockchain, make sure to leave a comment down below, and I'll try to answer them as fast as I can.